Hey guys, so we're installing the Equipment Mobility 42G uh, antenna array on top of our solitude here today. I'm just going to show you all the tools we got. 3 8 drill bit long enough to get through the, the roof down into our cupboard. One and three quarter hole saw, which will accommodate the, the post that goes down into the ceiling. This is just to cut away some of the rubber before I do that. I'll explain that when I get up there. Die core sealant that everybody uses on top of the RVs and just the stuff I'm going to use to clean the space um, when I get up there before I do the drilling. So I'm going to be up there doing that and Lenny's going to be inside and she's going to record the space that we're going down into and we're uh, going to show you that here in just a second. So this is the back of the RV, the back right side. We're going to put the router up here in this corner so we're going to be coming down through the ceiling right there and installing the, uh, the router right there and then probably running an ethernet cable along the back of this and then down to where we can get to the laptop. Measured it out, usually it's 16 inches, but I just went uh, 10 inches by 10 inches from the corner. I'm going to cut away some of this, a little bit of this rubber, so when I do the hole saw, it doesn't uh, yank on any of this, um, this gasket and rubber rooftop right here. So that popped out. All right, so I'm through. What I'll do is drop my wires down in there. What I'm actually going to do is take a piece of duct tape, tape these together. Push them down in there. And I got the cables through right now. So we're gonna finish fishing the cables through the hole and uh, get the pep wave sealed up top and, and good to go. So we made it all the way through. Now we're just gonna fish the rest of the wires. Right there. I'm actually going to let's clean this off again. Get some more alcohol. That's good. So I'm getting the 3M down on the uh, Epway. The last step, use the Dynacore. All right, so I got the uh, Dynacore around there sealed. Self-leveling sealant, so that will level out. And, but that's it, we're done with the top. Now we're just gonna go in and uh, finish the install inside. So this is the final setup. This is where we installed the pep wave. Got the wires running down from right there, which right, I'm actually gonna buy one of those little black, I can't remember what they're called, but it'll pass through. Um, thing to make that look a little bit better. But I got the pep wave mounted right there. I got it all hooked up. I got the wires coiled up and put a little uh, U-hook up there to kind of keep the wires up high because we're still going to put some stuff in here. But um, eventually what I'm going to do is get a ethernet cable and run it 
the back of there to the back of these cabinets. And then what I'll do is put a little hole back here that's gonna come down right here behind this so it'll be out of sight. And then that'll run down to uh, probably all the way over there to our table. That's about it. Pretty easy. The hardest part is all the cable access that I have, which I bought the one with the extended cable. Hindsight now, I probably should have done that. I didn't realize how short my run was gonna be at the time, so what can I do about that now? So the other thing we had to do was install a, the power, of course. I drilled a little hole back there, ran the power out, right up to the, right up to the router. And we just have a little extension cable that runs back behind here, so you know, it's out of sight, you can't see anything. Works pretty well. So the first thing you do when you get your router, after you have it all hooked up, is you're gonna log on to your get on your laptop and you're gonna want to log into that Wi-Fi network for the first time. Now the Wi-Fi network and the password for it is on the bottom of your router when you get it. I'll post a picture of that real quick. So that's what you first do is you log on to the router. Once you do that, then you're gonna want to log into the router. So to do that, you just open up your browser, you're gonna punch in 192.168.50.1. That's gonna pull up your PepWave router page. Now when you first log in, it's gonna be admin, admin. Uh, that's gonna be the generic one to log into the router. So you'll do that. And then after that, it's gonna prompt you to change that. Um, I left the username admin for now. And then you're going to want to change your password and username if you want. And this is the way, this is the uh, page that pops up. As you can see, I've got priority one, my Wi Fi. We have Wi Fi at this park, although it's not really working that great for right now. So then my priority two is my, my data plan. If you have a data plan, um, you get the chip and you actually put it into the router for the PEP wave. And once you put that chip in for your data plan, then this is how you would access that that plan through your router just like if you have the gateway it's the same kind of thing with the gateway that router that goes to your ceiling you put your chip inside there that the that your carrier gives you and that gives you your data plan so for this if you want your data plan to be the secondary to a Wi-Fi that you have or if you're at somebody's house and you're actually plugging in to the internet through a um, through a, a LAN cable then if you did the LAN cable or WAN then you would have that at priority one but for my situation and for most people probably who are RVing, you're going to have Wi-Fi if, the, if they have it at priority one and then your cellular data at priority two. That way if the Wi-Fi fails, it pops over to your cellular data. Now you can make it to where you can keep your cellular data disabled if you don't want it to automatically switch over, if you're worried about droppages and then you can take it out of priority two and leave it disabled. Same thing if you don't have Wi-Fi, you're going to want to take that Wi-Fi and drag it down to disabled. That way it's not messing with anything when you're actually online. If you just want to use your data for your cellular, you'd bring it up to priority one like this, and then you would drop everything melts back down to disabled. Unless you wanted to have that, that Wi-Fi in priority two just to just in case your cellular data plan drops for whatever reason. But before you start setting up your plans and stuff, the first thing you're gonna do is check your uh, firmware. And it's easy, you go to your system tab right here, and you would go to firmware and check for an update. Check for firmware. You're going to want to be on your Wi-Fi or your park Wi-Fi, obviously, before you do that. So when you're setting up your Wi-Fi, you're going to have to make a few changes. So you're going to go into details. Now, initially, you're going to see, like, Wi-Fi 2.4, Wi-Fi 5. You can change those and personalize them if you want. So when you first get this page, you might have to create this cellular uh, data or add it. For the cellular data, you're going to click on the details, and you're going to scroll down to the connection status or the... Yeah, connection settings. The um, you can kind of leave the network mode on auto. Now the DNF server is going to be on obtain uh, DNF server automatically. You're going to want to change that and put in these numbers 8888 and 8844. And this is just a basic uh, setup that is recommended by PepWave that I got when I purchased it from Techno RV. Uh, here you got your cellular settings, which you can you can mess with those if you want, depending on how many SIM cards you have. The router I'm using can use two SIM cards. I only have one in there right now, so I'm not worried about it, but you can change that up and, and make it how you want it. I got my carrier on auto, all that's on auto. Bandwidth allowance monitor. If you're running off of cellular data, say you want it to shut off after 50% of your, data, your uh, cellular data is used up, you can click on this and go into your bandwidth allowance and enable it. And you can change the setting to either do, you know, disconnect when usage hits 100% or on the first of the month, 15th of the month, however you, you can actually alter this up and make it to where your 
your cellular data will only use up so much before it cuts off. Um, after that, you're gonna look at your physical interface settings with enforced TTL, you're gonna put that at 65. Again, it's a recommendation that, that I read on the PepWave um, website. So for health check settings, your next thing you wanna do is disable your health check method. Now, the, the big reason for that, from what I gathered from the website with PepWave is if you're at a website or if you're at a an RV site and they're using one of those splash pages where you log online with the Wi-Fi address and it brings you to a splash page where you have to create a login whatever this is going to help with that keeping you keeping you from being messed up it's just stabilizes this connection a little bit better uh, that's it for that you're going to hit you're going to hit save and apply with that for your first time and it's going to pull it up there so then your cellular set up so one other thing you want to check is your APN um, I have my operator setting on auto and the uh, VZW internet automatically came up. If that doesn't come up automatically and you're not seeing your, your APN for whatever service provider you're using, you're going to want to click custom and, and type one of these, uh, I'm going to pull it up on the screen here, one of these four things depending on what service provider you have. And then you're good to go, save and apply, and you're, and you're, you're rocking. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is your Wi-Fi setup. Everything's auto. You're not really change much. So the signal acceptance level is a personal preference. If you want to make it to where if, if you're running your Wi-Fi as your priority one and you want it to switch over to your cellular data, if your Wi-Fi signal drops too low, you can set that here. Again, you're going to uh, disable the health check. And then like under here, I'm on some Wi-Fi right now. If I click on that, this is what you would do when you're actually logging into a Wi-Fi for the first time. This, this window is going to pop up once you pick a Wi-Fi. And you can go down again to your DNS server. You're gonna to wanna to click, use the following and punch in the 888-8844. That's gonna help that out. And then you would you would hit okay. And or when you close this out, when you go back up, to the Wi-Fi is, and bring my Wi-Fi up to priority two, let's just say. Let's bring it up to priority one. There it is, wireless networks. The Wi-Fi here is really bad, so normally your Wi-Fi networks would come up, and you'd be able to scan through them and see the one that you want to do and pick it and then go from there and, and go back to the steps that I already mentioned. But that's it. That's how you set it up. It's pretty easy. There's a lot of stuff you can tweak with this to, to personalize it more if you're into that. There's a bunch of other videos out there that can kind of help you with, with tweaking it even more. But that's the basic setup for this. Pretty simple. Then all you got to do, you'll probably have to restart the router. It'll take a few minutes. Give it some time and then just restart everything and log back onto your router. And, it, and, you, and you're, you're cooking. You're cooking with whale lard. Right, babe? Yeah. <laughs> that's all there is to it. That's the install for the Pep Wave. And that's the setup for the Pep Wave router. Please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Comment if, if there's anything that you think I can do better. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. If there's something else you want me to touch on, let me know. And if I can do it, I will. But that's all there is to it, and I hope you enjoyed it, and hope it helped you out. Have a good one.